What's going on, people? Welcome to my studio, AKA my garage. Have you ever sat there and thought, should I make this gearing decision or should I not make this gearing decision? It's a big decision sometimes. Well, we're gonna talk about three things that I have learned in my nine years of track experience. And hopefully, maybe you'll learn something too. Share it, like it, all the things. Let's get into it. What's up, people? So today we're gonna to talk about gearing, gearing decisions. I was getting ready for tally, and I just figured, well, why don't I actually make this a whole video thing? Where we're actually talking about how to make a decent gearing decision, and then how you can actually make gearing decisions at the track that don't mean a lot of work for you at the same time. That's kind of hard. So I'm in my uh, my little studio here. That's my uh, my box light. I got the old Canon 60D out there, and it's kind of nasty rainy out Ugh. anyway we're gonna close the garage door up here that's gonna be the first bike in here we're gonna ride though mm. kx 65 all right so we're talking about gearing yes so i have some gears i want to talk to you guys about gearing decisions and you should stick around because i'm actually going to get into the type of gearing that i use on my bike for specific tracks, okay? So you have a ZX6R and you run a Pirelli 190-60, I got some stuff for you. But for everybody else, we're gonna talk about actual gearing, why you should select some gearing over others, and what you actually should be thinking about when you're thinking of gearing. Okay, so let's get into it. So when you're actually looking at gearing and you're trying to actually go, oh, I'm at the track, I wanna change my gearing, I wanna try something a little bit better, I found a really convenient way to do that, all right? And basically it involves setting your wheelbase. Now the reason why that's important, setting your wheelbase and setting it first, is because the gearing you select, when you make a change at just one end or the other, it actually affects your suspension. And oh my gosh, everybody's gonna just kill me now because we're not gonna talk about suspension and why that matters, but it matters, okay? And the reason why we're not gonna talk about it is because that would be a whole nother video. Maybe I'll do one. If you like that, put it in the comments below. Let me know if I should do that. Anyway, and by the way, let me caveat. This is not an expert's opinion. This is Aaron's past decade of riding on the track experience. Okay, not almost, it's almost a decade. Not quite yet, but close. So anyway, we're gonna talk about wheelbase for a second wheelbase and the effect it has on your suspension. Wheelbase meaning that when you take the tire and you take it off and you put a big rear sprocket on or a small rear sprocket on, you have to move the tire right with the axle adjuster so that the chain slack is correct. Yes? Yes. Okay. When you did that, you created a longer lever. This is the tire. This is the axle pivot. A longer lever for the tire to affect the shock. And now the shock's dampening and preload settings are different. And why does that matter? Because you don't want your damping and preload settings to be different. You want them to stay the same. You wanna make one change, not five, okay? So, when I'm doing this at the track and I wanna find a gear ratio for a specific track, or maybe I wanna play with the gear ratio at a specific track to try something different a little bit, what I will do, is set my wheelbase for something that I like. I already know I like it, I want it to be there. So my suspension settings are normal and they just stay the same. Then I will take and I will go, okay, what three ratios can I run at this track and have it be generally all right? And I will plug them in. For instance, Little Talladega's coming up. That is an aggressive gearing track for me anyway. I run as big as a 48 rear okay with a 14 front this isn't the 14 front this is a 16 front but never mind so 48 14 is as, as aggressive as i have ran at little talladega now remember your tire sizes guys i run pirelli 190 60 profile i don't run a 180 55 with this gearing that would be insane okay that's just wheelie city even for a 600. so when i'm doing that and i'm setting up and i want to go okay let's try an aggressive gearing ratio there's some things that happen when you go aggressive for one you get a very 
touch your throttle. Your throttle goes burr, burr, like that. And now you've got to sit here and play with this like a little smooth thing and slows your response to get on the gas. If you're at a stop and go style track, which at Talladega, there's probably two corners that you can kind of smash it and not have to worry about it. Um, stop and goes, that's okay, because you just turn and pow, and you fire it and you're good. But at a flowing track like Roebling, for instance, that's not good. So you don't want an aggressive throttle. So that'll actually slow you down. The other thing about aggressive gearing is that your engine brake actually becomes increased or it becomes um, like your throttle, it's more sensitive. Okay, it's more aggressive. So your engine brake is more aggressive because you're actually up in the rev a lot more and the bike got more mechanical torque from the wheel on the actual engine itself. So if you don't understand what engine braking is, engine braking is the actual deceleration of the pistons in the engine. And because you have a compression ratio in an internal combustion engine, it actually has a uh, back torque effect, which means that the rear tire is dragging on the ground because the engine is slowing it down. So that's a good thing, it's also a bad thing if you want to be really fast and flowing at some track. So 600s need to flow. They need to flow. If you think that you've got to gear the crap out of your 600 to get out of a corner and that's how you're going to be fast, you will to a point and then you're going to be slow. Because what's going to happen is the guys who are actually fast are going to come by you. They're, you might get them on the initial spurt off the apex, but because they're carrying so much more entry speed and so much more corner speed, they are actually going to be on the throttle way before you. And by the time they get in the power band, you're already over there fighting a spinning rear tire or a wheelie or something, and they're just boom, full stick. Bike's not really complaining, not really jumping around. They can be on the edge more, edge of the tire, and on the edge of traction more than you can, and they can actually control it better than you can. So they're gonna leave the corner better, they're gonna be going down the straight better, and they're gonna be entering the next corner faster. So you're gonna get less behind. So it's important not to get too aggressive. However, there are some tracks that do get that. Talladega being one of them. Now, the other thing about gearing is that you want to be able to adjust it. So by setting your wheelbase, like I was saying before, you set your wheelbase, you put everything in for your suspension, you're happy, you like it, but you want to make that gearing change. Maybe you're too aggressive and you want to back it off a little bit. Well, what you can do is you can reduce one tooth in the rear and increase one tooth in the front. So what you did is you traded, okay? So now because you're making the rear sprocket smaller because of one tooth reduction and the front sprocket bigger, okay, you're actually lengthening the gearing ratio. You're making it for a smoother throttle response, a smoother engine braking, but you're also going to lose a little bit on acceleration, which isn't a bad thing. So when you set that up like that, you can literally pop the front sprocket, as I point to the rear sprocket, you can pop the front sprocket off pop the rear sprocket off, do that swap, put it all back together and not touch your axle blocks. So trying that might help you guys, okay? Now the difference in gear ratio when you do that is gonna be about 10%, all right? So looking at my bike for instance, <clears throat> if I ran like a 1645 or something like that, and then I went to say a 1546, all right? That's going to be about a 9% increase. But if I go from a 1546 to a 1447, okay, this is real Talladega numbers. I run a 1447 at Talladega GT right now, okay? That is an 11% increase, all right? 11% change, whatever. Increase, decrease, doesn't matter. But that's an 11% change. That's a lot, okay? But that's something that you can actually do and go, all right, should I run a longer or shorter gear ratio? And it's an important thing to know. If you're sitting there trying to play with one tooth adjustment, you already know where you're supposed to be. But if you don't know, you gotta make big adjustments, okay? Because you're gonna know real quick that that was a good thing or a bad thing to do. It also will show you how much better you can be on the gas, or maybe it's not aggressive enough and you're just getting left in the corner. Or maybe it's actually really, really good and your corner speed is really high and you can get on the gas real soon and you can just fly down the straightaway like that because you're wrapping yourself around that corner so fast and then you can bike up and trap it. So when I run like a super aggressive gearing, the rear tire takes a beating, okay? But if I run a really soft gearing, the rear tire lasts a little bit longer. I wonder why, huh? Okay, so anyway, 
that's basically what it is, guys. Um, if you like this kind of content, please hit the like button. Hi, that'd be great. Check you later.